Hi, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. In just a moment, you're gonna see a presentation about our latest release, Metastock 15. I know you're going to enjoy it. If you'd like to get Metastock 15, the best way you can do that is to call 801-506-0900. We're doing a lot of great deals as part of our introductory offers, including discounts on Metastock, uh, if you're not yet a data subscriber, you can get two free months of our real-time data or end-of-day data. Uh, you get $100 off of our new Teach, Talk, Trade, Trend, Momentum Toolkit add-on, and you can get a free copy of Unlisted Power of Metastock, a $99 value, which also includes two free hours of training videos. So give us a call, 801-506-0900. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the presentation. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the uh, first uh, introduction to Metastock 15 webinar that we're doing. I'm um, pleased to have you here. It looks like we have a good crowd. But one of the things I'd like to tell you is as we go through this presentation today, uh, feel free to ask any questions. This is an open uh, webinar. You're feel free to ask any questions as we go through. Uh, if it's something I can't get to right away, I will come back at the end and answer your questions. And I'll try and keep an eye on them as we go through the presentation. Let me introduce myself. My name is Kelly Clement. I'm the COO here at Metastock. I've been here for about uh, 15 years now, and I'm really excited to be able to introduce Metastock 15. This really is a very user-driven upgrade, uh, things people have been asking us for for a long time to bring back and put in the software, so we're very pleased to be able to do that. Uh, I did a little poll at the beginning. It looks like most people watching the webinar don't have uh, version 15 yet. Some of you do, so we'll kind of gear it for both of you so uh, you'll get a little bit of training, but also uh, be introduced to Metastock 15. So let's go ahead and start there. Uh, of course, the first thing I always need to do is uh, just go through a disclaimer. So I'll take you through that really quickly. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should be only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading, Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay, off, we're done. Okay, let's get in with the uh, with the good stuff here. So um, where we're going to start is just let's just quickly look at what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, first of all, we're going to focus a lot on the offline mode, the downloader, the ability to do local data, read your own local data. For those of you who have had maybe Metastock 12, 13, or 14 and don't know what local data is, we'll kind of take you through an overview of what that is and how that works. Uh, we'll show you some new features in the Explorer and System Tester that really let you get in and customize your time frame and exploring and going through testing. Uh, we'll, we'll get into some Forecaster. Uh, now you can do any time frame in the Forecaster, which is great because one of the issues I know people have been asking us for for a long time, really since we brought out the Forecaster, is to be able to do multiple time frames. So be able to do that uh, forecast in a 30 minute or a five minute or a 75 minute or a weekly. So whatever time frame it is you want to forecast in, you can now do that. So we'll talk about that. Now the Power Strike is an add-on that we've actually been selling for a few years. It's actually really popular. Uh, it's really good for options. If you're an options trader, it's a great confirmation system for being able to help you uh, quickly develop uh, your trading strategy around it and confirm what you may have already, what you to help you get a more robust signal, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, Haguro method is a great method for support and resistance in determining market direction, uh, either of the overall market or a specific security. Uh, the Teach Talk trade systems, we'll go through those. And then uh, seven new templates as well. So we'll go through all of that uh, as we go through the presentation. But let's uh, let's start with offline mode. That's obviously one of the biggest features in Metastock 15. So we're actually going to start here, actually just in Metastock 15. We'll bounce in, back and forth in and out of the PowerPoint as we go through, but for the most part, we'll probably just uh, be inside Metastock uh, as we go through this presentation. So obviously local mode and the ability to go offline kind of go hand in hand. 
Uh, this goes back to maybe some of you who had version 11, uh, 10, or, or older. Uh, what you were able to do is download, save your charts, and then be able to look at your charts anywhere. You didn't have to be connected to the internet, uh, so you could really sit down, do your analysis anywhere you go without having to pay, look for a hot spot or anything like that. So it can really help you in identifying great places to trade and identify what, what stocks you want to trade without being tied to the internet. So let's actually take a look at how to go offline. That's one of the biggest questions to start off. Well, if you're in Metastock and you're online already, as I am here, you can do a few things. One, you can come up here to File, and then just click Go Offline, and that'll take you offline. You can come down here to the bottom right-hand corner, and there's this little Online button. If you click that, that will take you offline. Let's just show you what happens if you go offline. So we'll just go File, Go Offline, and you'll see here this, the top part grays out because we're not doing online instruments anymore and the online lists are now grayed out as well. So I can now access my offline mode lists and be able to quickly go through those. So let's go back online here. We'll just go file, go online again. And it'll take me back into Metastock. Now, one of the things you can do is you can access your offline mode while you're online. That You can go back and forth. You can see these are, these are accessible. Now, if you want to start Metastock in offline mode without opening and going online, just go to your start and go down to your Thomson Reuters folder and you'll see an option there for Metastock offline mode. So I'm in Metastock Pro, I can go offline with Metastock Pro or Metastock DC, either one will go offline and that's how easy it is to go offline. So let's take you through a little bit of the downloader and how to add data in and update data. That's one of the new features in here is our newest downloader. So we're going to open up the downloader we just do that by clicking this little downloader icon right here. It's actually opening up on my other screen, so I'll drag it over here in just a second. Okay, there we go. So this is the new downloader. So the downloader is an awesome tool to help you be able to quickly download, convert, store, and work with your data. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the downloader. We have a lot of great training videos on it. I just want to quickly show you how you can add in a, a folder download and then put it into Metastock and access that data. So we're just going to do a quick walkthrough here. So to add in a folder, now there's a there's a simple utility that you can go through on Metastock.com that'll set up all your local file folders for you. You don't have to go through a lot of pain here to do it. Um, so there's a great video on our website that shows you how to do it, but let's go through and let's just grab a folder here. So I'm just going to upload the NASDAQ 100. So you can see I'm just going to my Metastock local data file here. I'll grab the NASDAQ 100. It puts all those in here. And now all I have to do is click download. And well, what it'll do is go through and grab all that data and download it for me. Now, I don't have any of this data stored on my computer. I just have the security symbols that I've set up. So it's going through and grabbing five years worth of data of all these symbols for me and putting it onto my computer. So you can see it works pretty quickly in grabbing all that data and putting it uh, right, into Metis right into the downloader and storing it on my computer. So once this is done, we can go in and have Metastock be able to open it and work with it, which is great. Okay, so we're just about done there. Okay, so we've got uh, all 105 securities now. And once this finishes up, it'll tell us here's a little report. Here's how many records it added. So it had to go through and grab about 1,280, so that's about the five years worth of data for those that were available. If not, maybe shorter. And if there were any errors in the data when it did it, it would tell me there was any errors, but it looks like we got a green check mark on everything, so we didn't have any errors. Now, one thing that's really cool in the Downloader 15 that you couldn't do in previous versions of the Downloader is you couldn't do the hourly snapshot. So in version 13 and higher, we gave people who are working online the ability to get an hourly snapshot of the daily bar in Metastock DC using... Um, data link. So now you can go in and you can actually download snapshot data throughout the day. So if you're in the middle of the, the morning about uh, say noon, you want to grab what data has come in so far, you can come in here and click, select include partial bars and it will actually be able to collect that day's data up to that point uh, up through the last snapshot. So that updates about once an hour. Now the only hitch to that is you would need to go back at the end of the day and download the complete up-to-date data to make sure that you get that. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave that unchecked for now, so I should have the up-to-date market data. 
So if I wanted to, if I had uh, old files that I wanted to bring in, let's uh, let's say I'm using our new file format that we've just uh, created called MS Local. It's a lot faster, has more precision to it than the old file format. Um, and I, I, there's a couple of uh, questions here I'll ask answer here in just a second. So we've got uh, uh, our old file format that's called Legacy in the downloader, CSV or MS Local. You can convert any of your legacy file format or any of your CSV files into the new Metastock file format. Again, it has a lot more precision. It's a lot faster to work with. So you can do that while retaining all your old data. You don't have to overwrite it. You can just convert it and store it in a different folder. Uh, so I have a question here from uh, Stephen. So I have some directories in MS14 set up for the securities I like. Can I import these directories into the new downloader for daily updates instead of using MS11 for my daily downloads? Yeah, so you'll be able to take those and put those into MS15, uh, download them and store them just like you were in MS11, so you don't have to do those daily downloads in MS11 anymore. You can do them all in 15, so you're not using two different programs like you are now. And uh, support can help you uh, with getting those transferred over and set up as well. Okay, so again, we can convert, we can download, it makes it really easy to be able to work with our data. You can manipulate your data. You can uh, change your first dates and download more data, move your data around, create new securities. There's a lot that you can do in here. So it's a very robust new downloader built from the ground up. Um, a lot easier to use than the old downloader. The old downloader was a very uh, clunky and, and difficult to work with. So now you don't have to work with that anymore. So when you're in Metastock now, the question is, well, how do I get my data into Metastock so I don't have to, so I can use it? That's the big question. So let's uh, let's actually go in here. So when I'm in Metastock, all you have to do is come up to the top, right click in the Power Console, and just say Manage Custom Lists. This is where I'll go to grab my data. So you can see lists that I have set up in Metastock already. Uh, you can tell they're local data because they're set up with uh, with a pound pound sign here. So I'm just going to come down to the new click local instruments and I just have to browse to that let's grab this from the other monitor here so let's browse to the folder that we just did we just did the NASDAQ 100 so I'm just going to click that select it now what's great is once I click it and select it I don't have to worry about going through and selecting all of them like I did used to have to do in version 11 it just selects them automatically and if I click add it'll also grab my folder name and then all I have to do is click save so now I have the NASDAQ 100 in there. It's just very quick, point and click, and then those folders are added. Uh, so Barton is asking, where do you find the files to download? I'll actually show you that at the end of the presentation. I'll show you where to go in and uh, download those uh, symbol utility files. Uh, actually, we can do that here really quick. Well, let's, uh, let's bring up a, a web browser here. Sorry, give me just a second here. Let me get a web browser. Since we're talking about it, let's, uh, let's bring it up. So we're going to go to metastock.com. On the left-hand side here, all you have to do is click on support, go to the main support page. And then if you scroll down, you'll see this download updates under technical support. And then we just go to symbol lookup files. Oh, excuse me, I went to the wrong one. <laughs> we'll actually go to I'm sorry, I'm clicking a little too quickly there for my own good. Okay, let's go to the main support page again. Go to download updates. And we'll go to Metastock symbol utility files. And right at the top here are the ones for version 15. And you can go through, we've actually structured these a lot better. So if you're doing mainly US and Canada, you can click that and you can see the, the structure for how we're setting it up and what files you're, you're getting out of there. You can, uh, if you're doing other markets, you can click on any of those and you can see the symbol utility file. All you have to do is just download and run the utility file. It'll then install it to see Metastock local data. And then it's easy to go in and update it just like I showed you. Okay, so very, very easy to do and use there. Um, if you're using the older downloaders, obviously this is right down here at the bottom, but the new downloader with the new file format is all set up here. Better, better setups, better utilities here as well. So that's how you access that. Okay, a few uh, notes here in Metastock. 
is that you can actually do a few different things. Uh, we've already talked about offline mode. We've talked about how to bring in your local data. So here's what Metastock can actually read. You can actually, uh, Metastock will natively read. You don't have to even convert if you don't want to. Metastock will do a legacy Metastock data, which is from uh, downloader version 11. It'll read CSV natively and text files. And you can do our new and improved local data file format. So you can use all three of those natively in Metastock without having to do any conversion. Um, Soft is asking, can you convert data from Excel or text files? So you can actually convert from CSV or text into the new file format in the downloader. It'll take care of all that for you. So that's something that you can do uh, natively in the downloader or have Metastock read it automatically as well. Okay, so we've talked about the downloader, how awesome it is. Again, much easier to use than the previous versions of the downloader. And again, for those of you who've never used the downloader or experienced what it is to be offline, it's really about being able to quickly download and work with data. Imagine only having to, when you do a scan right now, you may have to, if you're doing multiple scans, do multiple data a couple of times, and it takes a while to, to grab that data each time. With the downloader, you're downloading it, storing it, and when you uh, do your exploration, you're actually going through and just using that local file, so it can be a lot faster in grabbing your data and actually doing your scans. So there's a big benefit to actually going offline and using offline mode. Okay, uh, this one is a big uh, thing that people have been asking us for a while. This is a, there's some features of this both in uh, Metastock End of Day and Metastock Pro. Let's just talk about it for just a moment. So um, where we've been historically is you've always been able to customize your time frame when you're opening up a chart. Let's say I'm bringing up the Dow here. If I wanted to, I could come down to and choose any of the time frames that are built into Metastock. But, and then I could customize it. So let's say I wanted a 75 minute chart. Okay, I could quickly bring that up, bring up a 75 minute chart and do my analysis there. Now, one of the issues is that what you couldn't do in 13, 14 or 12 is you couldn't do a custom time frame on your scan or your back test. So now we can go in and say, oh, well, I trade the 75 minute bar or I trade the 240 minute bar or I like to trade a three-day bar. I like to analyze there and see what's going on with the three-day bar, uh, maybe in, in DC. So now you can come into the Explorer, select Custom. This is the new feature here. And you can set your time frame. So we can do a 75-minute, um, and we can do our exploration there and go through and find out which symbols are giving a 75-minute buy or sell, and then open those charts up. We can also now back test those, so you can do a 75-minute back test. That's something you can do before as well. So we're very excited about those features. We've had a lot of requests for that over the years to have that custom time frame to be able to scan uh, within Metastock and back test. The other part where we've done that is in the forecaster. So if you haven't used the forecaster, you're using a, a much older version of Metastock or maybe uh, version 12 or previous you don't have the forecaster. We're not going to spend a lot of time about what the forecaster is in, in this video, but um, we're going to talk about, we'll, we'll quickly go in and look at it and, and look at a few clouds. So let's just say here that I wanted to pull up uh, Apple in the forecaster. Before you could only do a daily chart, and that was, a, that was frustrating to a lot of people to be able to only look at a daily because not everybody trades a daily. Maybe you want to look at a weekly when you're in Metastock DC and look at the forecast cloud there. If you're running Metastock RT, obviously you're trading on time frames like a one minute or five minute, 30 minute, hourly, or whatever custom time frame it is you trade. You can now use that inside the forecaster. So it's, it's really a great to have that upgrade there and be able to do that. So now we can come in choose any time frame that we want with the forecaster. Let's maybe just do a 60 minutes to show you here. And then we'll start the forecaster. So as the forecaster pulls up, if you haven't used the forecaster before, it's an amazing tool. It's really designed to help you understand what happens when you, when you have a buy signal. So let's say we, we're getting a, a a candlestick doji bearish signal right now is the most recent uh, setup, but let's maybe pick something else. So five days or more down. So we're talking five days or five bars or more RSI oversold. So here's an example of maybe what we're looking at with uh, the forecaster. It, what it does is it goes through and it analyzes every time there's been an RSI oversold, it 
event or technical setup. And when we have those events, it goes back and it analyzes them to see what price is done every time it's happened. So after this one, price rose and then declined. Here it rose uh, drastically. Here it rose, then declined. And then here it's risen and starting to decline. So it, right, it goes through all those events and then gives us what's called a forecast cloud to help us understand the direction of price. So as we can see here, as we kind of saw on our chart, you can see here with the yellows, we have a very high probability of price going this upward direction before reversing back downward. So it gives us high probabilities, it gives us mid probabilities and long term possibilities. So we can, we can see the different probabilities here based off of this scale over here. If you haven't sat through any of the videos on the forecaster, I highly recommend it. There's actually some great videos that come in a, a tutorial that you get when you get Metastock called 15 called Unleash the Power of Metastock. And that'll actually take you through and show you how the forecaster works, how to read the, the, uh, the signals, and how to use them in trading. So it's very, very good training that comes with Metastock 15 to help you understand this and use this tool. But you can see up here now, I, I'm analyzing the 60 minute chart. Now what it does is when it pulls over the data, it's a snapshot of when, from when I pulled the data over. So you can see, we can see all of our different symbols here. We're looking at the 60 minute chart and I can plot the forecast cloud on this side to see how it matches up. And now one of the things that we've actually added into the forecaster here as well is this new count telling you how many bars forward it's looking. So we have one future bar plus up to 12 future bars, 23 future bars, 34. So now you can get a feeling of how far out the cloud is actually going to take you before it starts to lose relevance. So that, that helps us a lot understand what's going on with our, our trade and being able to see that future bar and actually count out and use um, and count for how long we're going to be in a trade. That's one of the big things of it and understanding that. So some great new features there. One of the other things we've done is in the recognizer library, you can now see what custom time frames the different recognizers will work for. So we have daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, and intraday. So maybe things like a 52 week high or low, obviously they're not really going to work on a 60 minute time frame or a five minute time frame. So they're only set to daily. Um, when you do your own patterns, we can let's modify a, a pattern that we already have in here. You can set what time frames you want the patterns to work. So if you think it should only work on daily, weekly, and intraday, you can set that. Click save, and then the the forecaster will only recognize it when you pull it up on those time frames. So it'll make it a lot easier for you to be able to use and set to only the for, the time frames that you want. Okay, so there's our uh, updates to the forecaster again. That's been a, a big demand to be able to work in the different time frames especially for those using Metastock RT and wanting to do some intraday analysis with the forecaster, you're no longer limited to the daily chart. Okay, let's bring uh, up our uh, PowerPoint here. So we've talked about the forecaster. So now one of the things that we've done here is uh, people always like it when we give them new systems and strategies and new confirming things to help them in their trading. And the first one that we've added in here is one that's called Power Strike. And again, Power Strike's a uh, is an add-on that's actually sold on our website. You could actually go buy it separately if you wanted to. It's a $200 upgrade, uh, a $200 uh, add-on that you can buy on metastock.com, but it's included free as part of the upgrade or a new purchase. So if you're upgrading or getting the new purchase, this is included for free. And what uh, PowerStrike does is it helps us understand support and resistance around strike levels and then looks at volatility and helps us understand if we should be having a buy or sell signal based off of the volatility and the support and resistance. So let's just talk about uh, support and resistance for a moment. I think uh, this is a pretty standard concept everybody gets, but just in case, we'll talk about it for just a second. So obviously support is a level below market where buying pressure exceeds selling pressure and a decline is halted. Conversely, resistance is a level above the market where selling pressure exceeds buying pressure and the rally is halted. So that's from uh, John Murphy out of his book, Charting Made Easy. If you haven't read that book, it's a great little book on ident just identifying standard chart patterns and identifying what's going on on charts. So here's, a, here's an example of support. So we can see here it, it's using this line right here as a support level. And then here we're using this line as a resistance level before it breaks and then can become support. So support resistance is a, is a fairly standard concept 
But the, the way that uh, PowerStrike uses it is a little bit different. So the first thing it uh, takes into account is that buying and selling pressure usually takes it goes around easily divisible numbers. So in this example here, uh, I think most of us would rather divide into 20 than 19. It's an easier number to work with. So that's the kind of principle that it uses when it's uh, taking into account its calculations, that um, 20 is a much easier number. So, so what it does is it uses option strike prices as its guiding principle for support and resistance. So just to recap for everybody, if you're not familiar with options or you are, if you do trade options, this, can, this is kind of a review, but let's uh, use it as an example for what we're doing here. So pr when a price is between 5 and 25, option strike prices in rise in increments of $2.50. So example, $5, $7.50, $10, 12 dollars If our price is between 25 and 200, it moves in increments of $5. So 25, 30, 35, 40. If price is above 200, it moves in increments of 10. Now that's not always the case. There are some high liquidity stocks that move at a dollar, or maybe if they're you know, trade at $700, they may have smaller strike prices. But as a general rule, this is what Oprah sets out as the Options Price Reporting Authority sets out as its option strike price levels. So that's the way that PowerStrike is coded and designed to actually use that. So what it does is we can see in this example, this stock is trading about $84. So its strike prices move at increments of $5. So you can see our support is here at 75, and then we've had a previous support here back at 70. So the top line is called the up strike, and the bottom line is called the down strike. So the red, red one's always the up, and the bottom's always the down. So it will move in those increments at the, at the most relevant strike prices for what it, what it set up. So what it does then is it looks at these levels and it looks for concentrated buying and selling around those levels. When it has concentrated buying and selling at those levels, it actually gives us, it's more attractive to us as traders. Okay, so, and then the last principle, and we'll get into the system and show some examples, but the bullish and bearish pressure at option strike prices usually resolve quicker at those levels than at other levels. So. It's, it's very unique in trading options and analyzing options. So if you're trading options, this is a great strategy for you to help you confirm your buy or sell signal. The next thing it does, so it's got those up strike and the down strike, which are support and resistance. And then what it does, it looks at pivots. And obviously when we're talking about pivots, we have a pivot low. As you can see on your screen here, we have a down and then an up. So a pivot low and then a pivot high. So reversal that way. So that's our that's our uh, pivot high and low. And then what it does is it combines the pivot with volume and then gives a score. Greater volume equals greater score. So when you have a greater volume around a pivot, it's going to give you a greater relevance to how strong that particular bar is. Okay? And then what it does is it combines all that together and actually scores individual bars. So you'll see here we have these fives, ones, some threes, now, the bar colors that you see here are just relevant to the score on the bar. So if I have a 5, the bar is going to be red. It doesn't mean it's bullish or bearish. It just means that's a 5 score on that bar. Okay. So then if we have a 1, it's going to be blue. Then if we have a green, it's going to be 3. So that's how that's, how that's displayed on the chart. Okay. So then what it's doing as well is it's using, you'll see these bands around the price these are volatility bands. It's using that as a measurement of volatility around the upstrike or the downstrike, and it combines all those things together to give us a total score. So you can see in this example here, it's actually kind of hard to see in the PowerPoint, so we're actually going to go into Metastock, do a scan. We'll use some of our local data, do a scan, and see what, uh, what kind of things we come up with here. So let's go back to Metastock here for just a moment so we can do some analysis with it. Let's go into the Explorer. And I'm just going to go back to a daily time frame here. Now the power strike system is always in here under adapted power strike for the for the scan. So we'll we'll do that. Now let's go into our local data here, and let's scan the S&P 100 and see what kind of results that we get. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't update the S&P 100 data, so we're going to do the Nasdaq 100. Okay, we can load minimum records or we can load whatever records we want. 
let's go ahead and do our exploration. So now what PowerStrike is going to do is it will only find stocks that have a buy or a sell enabled for the day. And we'll look at what a buy or sell enabled means and how you get that. So when it gives its results, again, these are confirming results. So you may want to do a scan and find MACD buy signals and then do adaptive power strike to see if it's confirming as part of that signal. So let's do reports here and bring this over to the screen here so you can see it. So what we're seeing now is we're seeing this enabled or or not, so we have enabled question mark. If I rank this, the ones with a positive one are buy enabled. If it has a negative one, it's a short enabled. So let's just uh, let's maybe look at Alphabet here just to see, or let's uh, let's look at Citrix Systems. Let's go ahead and open up this chart. Now again, this is local data that we're we're using now, so we're just working offline. Let's go ahead and right click and let's apply template. We're going to find the Adaptive Power Strike template. We'll choose apply here. And we'll see, all, we'll see our score and everything appear on the chart. So you can see these volatility bands only go back so far. It's looking for current volatility measurements. So that's what it's looking for. So you will only ever see the score within those bands. So you may see score down here around the downstrike and score up here around the upstrike. And it looks like most of our score is around the upstrike up here. So you can see really how prices tend to gravitate around this 85 line because that's where options are trading. It's, it's, it's that number that traders go to and are trading at. So it's a very high volatility number that people look for. So let's go into our commentary. So you'll see now here we have an upstrike score of 85, scoring 40 points, and a downstrike score showing nine points. So the upstrike is a lot more, uh, is a lot more powerful here. So it's giving us a short signal. So upstrike scores at least eight points and is at least 33% higher than the downstrike. The close is in the upstrike resistance zone and the forecasted trend is below the upstrike. So this red line right here, it's an indicator called the time series forecast. That's an indicator that's built into Metastock. And what it does is it's, a, it's designed to help you understand the direction of price. So right now the, that line is below the downstrike and it's now giving us a short signal based off of that. So we we can trade this on itself, but it's a lot more powerful as a confirming signal. So if you have uh, your trading strategy, whatever it is you're trading, use this as a confirmation system to what you're already doing to make it even more powerful. So that's a great way to use Power Strike and help you identify what it is that you're doing. Okay, so that's a quick overview of Power Strike. Uh, now we're going to talk about this one called Sector Stat Experts. And excuse me, I'll take a quick drink of water. And what uh, sector stat experts are? These are this is actually a really cool system and strategy. What this is is uh, when we uh, developed Metastock 13, there's a, we talked to traders all around the world, obviously. And where sector stat came in is in Metastock 13 and higher, you have these sector stat indicators. And the sector stat is designed to help you understand market breadth, direction of market, and where the markets are going, or individual sectors. Now, when it was very confusing to for people the way that it was displayed because most of the time you're looking at advancing lines, declining lines, um, McClellan oscillators, and most people didn't, weren't familiar with how those worked or what they were. So we'd get a lot of questions on those. So what we decided to do is actually put together expert advisors around them to help people understand market direction and market sentiment as well as sector direction and, and, uh, and direction. So let's kind of go in, into this and we'll take you through it and what it is and how it works. So in sector stat experts, we've included 40 new indicators. So those are primarily around new global markets that we're covering, uh, 18 new experts and 19 new templates. So again, we've already talked about this. It's designed to help you understand market direction. So what do we use to calculate this? So when we're calculating these experts, there's six different indicators that we're using. So we're using advancing and declining issues up volume and down volume, McClellan oscillator, and McClellan oscillator of the up, down, and volume. So we're going to go through what each of these are. Now when we're talking about advanced decline lines, what we're talking about is, let's say, we're so when we're talking about a U.S. market review, what it's doing is it's looking at sectors underneath it. So there's 10 sectors 
Uh, we're talking about uh, consumer discretionary, financial, um, technology, energy, utilities, things like that. So we have 10 different sectors. And what it does, it looks for how many of those sectors are going up every day, how many are going down. And then it gives us a quick uh, overview of, okay, we've got eight going up, two going down. So we know the majority of the market's going up. So that's step one. So here's our, here's our market experts based on sectors. So these are when we're looking at, the, say, the U.S. market or the Australian market. Um, and actually, I'm uh, getting a quick question um, from Don. Does sector stats only apply for U.S. markets? I'm in the Canadian market. Well, there's actually an expert for the Canadian market. So there's actually now globally seven new different uh, global markets that are in there. There's the U.S. market, uh, Canada, Singapore, Australia, Hong Kong. Uh, there's London. Uh, Johannesburg. So there's a lot of different global markets in there now that you can now look at. And I'll show you how this applies to each individual market here in just a moment. So we look at these 10 different sectors, see which ones are going up, which ones are going down. We also do the same thing on volume. So you get an advanced decline line on volume. Now, if you're looking at advanced decline line, it's actually a pretty easy thing. And most people don't really look at them because they are very noisy. Let's just look at one so you can, so we can kind of understand what we're talking about here. So let's, uh, we're looking at the Dow here. Let me change this to a daily chart. And I'm going to go in and grab the sector stat market. And we'll look at uh, advancing issues. So again, we're looking at the 10 sectors underneath this to understand the direction of the market. So, um, and this will be, it's the same across all the global markets. Now it takes it just a moment to calculate because it's actually pulling in 10 different sector data. So you can see there, this, it's actually very noisy. It, it bounces up and down around a lot. You can't really get a clear picture of what's going on by looking at this. It's, it's just noisy is the best way to put it. So how do we make that better? How do we make it not noisy? Well, what we do is we use what's called the McClellan Oscillator. The McClellan Oscillator is really popular for broad market analysis and understanding the broad market. So it was developed by Sherman and Marion McClellan. So what it is, it's the difference between a 19 and a 39 period exponential moving average of the advancing issues minus declining issues. Okay, so we're taking advancing minus declining and running this moving average difference uh, through it. So then what happens is it's um, usually multiplied for 100 by, for scaling purposes, and then it moves up and down. So let's, uh, let's actually pull up and let's look at the template in Sector Stat Experts here really quick. So we're just going to right-click Apply Template. We'll scroll down here and we'll look for Sector Stat. And you can see there's a number of different things in here based off of individual sectors or different markets. So if you're looking for the Canadian one like you were, it's under TSX Market Review. That's where you'd go for that one. Uh, we're looking for the U.S. market, so we'll select that one. And we're just going to choose Apply Template. Now, when this comes up, it's got a lot of different indicators on it, but I'm going to just quickly take you through it, show you how it works. It's very easy to use once you understand it. Um, let, so let's take a look. So up at the top here, we have our McClellan Oscillator. So again, this is advancing minus declinings, and then it's the difference between the 39 and the 19 period exponent, exponential moving average with scaling times 100. So basically what all that means is we're looking for it to be bullish or bearish. Now how do we decide whether it's bullish or bearish? Well, all we have to do is we look at the scale over here. You can see there's a zero line over here. If it's above zero, it's bullish. If it's below bearish, if it's below zero, it's bearish. So that's all we're looking for. Above bullish, below bearish, okay? Now, the one below it is actually the same indicator, but it's done on volume. So if it's above zero again, it's bullish. If it's below, it's bearish. So what we start to look for is for these indicators to be bullish or bearish to help us understand the sentiment of the market and the underlying sectors, what they're doing and what's going on to help us understand that market direction. So for example here, we'll look at this one. So right now, what's the market doing? Well, it's, bull it's bearish, excuse me, it's below zero. It's below here, so it's it's bearish on both counts. Now, if we come down to the chart down here with the experts, what it does is it will actually paint the bars green when it's above zero. When they're below zero, they'll turn red. When the McClellan oscillator on volume is bullish, it will turn green on the trend line down, trend ribbon. 
and when it's bearish it will turn red. Now you can see most of the time they correlate and they correlate very well. You'll see volume going out or you'll see money moving in. So it's actually a good way to measure money and see where money is flowing into as well. So we can see right now what's money been doing for the most part for the last few months on the Dow. Well, it's obviously been flowing out. There hasn't been a lot of inflow, and the market's been really consolidated lately, so we don't see a lot of big moves, so it's harder to measure this type of thing. But we can see that, our, that the market sentiment overall has been bearish over the last few months, and specifically more right now. You can see more money is going out, prices are going down, volume's going down, we're losing a lot in the market, so we have a very bearish sentiment in the market right now. So when these, when these collide, when these come together, so when both price and volume flip above, you'll get this buy signal come in. When they go opposite, you'll see a sell signal come in. And you can see, for the most part, it's very good at understanding the general direction of the market and what the market's going to do because it has all that underlying market breadth data so it can really move in and understand that market data. So, for example, here you can see it really caught that big change in the market here. We caught the big move in the market here. We, and we can quickly identify changes in sentiment in the market. So we can go in. We also have an expert commentary window in here. The expert commentary is great in this type of scenario because it does help us understand what's going on, how it's being calculated, and how to actually read the chart. So again, it walks you through how to trade it, how to what it can be used for, the overall sentiment of the market, tells you how the, the oscillators are calculated and walks you through it. Now one thing that's great, let's say we're looking at the Dow here, you can use this on just looking at market sentiment, see what's going on in market sentiment. You can trade the, the ETFs using this, so if you're trading say the diamond or the spider or the Qs, you can use it on there. You can use it on options on those particular vehicles. Maybe look at it with the E-mini, see what's going on there. So there's a lot of different scenarios that you can look at it with. Now, if you come in to the Power Console, and let's go back to chart here. We'll look at two quick examples, and then we'll, we'll move on to some other things here. There's actually some lists now that are built into Metastock for the sector stat experts. So you can see that right here under sector stat experts. So we can choose the Canadian market here. We'll just, we'll just choose the Toronto Stock Exchange as an example. And then we can op either open up the, uh, the template from the Power Console, or we can open up the chart and, uh, and pull it up. So let's uh, right-click, apply the template, look down at Sector Stat uh, TSX Market Review, and you, you'll see that it pulls up that specific one specifically for the TSX and the Canadian market. Um, I'm getting a question from Jim. Is Metastock 15 available? Yep, absolutely. Metastock 15 became available yesterday. So you can actually go uh, talk to our sales department and they can help you get upgraded to Metastock 15 now. So here's uh, the TSX market expert. So you can see, it, again, it catches the sentiment of the market very well and helps us uh, quickly capture the market directions. We can see today just flipped to a, a bearish scenario. So maybe it's time for a little bit of, uh, if you're in long position, setting your, your stops a little tighter and protecting those profits. Now, for the U.S. as well, one thing we did is we did include um, individual sectors analysis that you can look at. So let's say we wanted to look at the financial sector. So let's, uh, let's open this up here and let's go to a daily chart again. Now, you can look at these in different time frames. I'm just looking at them at the daily. And let's go to the financial individual sector. So again, if you're trading stocks to be able to, um, if you're trading stocks and you want to analyze the sector that they're in or see the health of a sector that they're in before trading a stock within a sector, Sector Stat Experts is a great place to do that. Just jump in, apply the expert. You can even apply it to that individual stock to see what the overall sentiment of that sector is before making a trade. So. Uh, here you can see, again, we've just switched to a bearish scenario here in financials, so it gives us that sentiment. And again, if you're trading an individual sector, you're probably trading the ETF of that sector, and that's what they're designed around are the ETFs and understanding the direction of the ETFs. So you can use it there. Uh, I'm being asked by Don 
do you have to subscribe to indices for sector stack? So if you are, that's a good question. So if you're subscribing to Zenith, it, you'd be able to pull it up within Zenith. It's included in all regions uh, with Metastock Zenith. If you're subscribing to Metastock end of day DC and using Datalink, you do need the indices package to be able to pull up the, uh, the sector stat experts because it's, it's calculated using the different indices to be able to pull that in. Okay, so that's sector stat experts. Let's, uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint here. And again, uh, we, we went through all the rules there. Um, you don't need to cover that again. And again, there's training that you get unleashed the power of Metastock that takes you through this and shows you how it works and, and what to do. Uh, now, one uh, last note on the sector stat experts is the sector stat experts actually only do work online. That's how the all the um, indicators are calculated is online. It pulls in all that data online. So you do need to be connected online and using either Datalink or Zenith with those experts. That's the only experts that are set up that way within Metastock. But we have, using the symbols, you have to do that. It is all open source, so if you want to manipulate it, you can as well. That's up to you, but it is all calculated in there. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about a method that's called the Haguro method. Um, now, you'd ask me, why is there a picture of a battleship here, and why, why, what's it have to do with the stock market? Well, uh, Haguro, uh, this is actually the name of a battleship um, from Japan back in 1945. It was actually named after a mountain region in Japan. Um, so that's where the name comes from, the Haguro method. It was actually created by a gentleman from Japan named uh, Siki Shimizu. I uh, hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, he wrote uh, the book, The Japanese Chart of Charts, uh, and did a lot of research on candlestick and candlestick trading and understanding how candlesticks work. Um, that work was taken uh, and analyzed by a gentleman named Gary Burton. Gary Burton is um, a pr the president of the Australian Technical, Ana Australian Technical Analysis Society of Sydney. He's the president of that area. So he spent a lot of time doing a, a research on uh, Siki Shinzu's work and understanding the direction of the market based off of his candle patterns. And then our own Jeff Gibby here, who a lot of you may know, uh, worked with Gary to bring that code into Metastock so people can quickly plot it and understand it in Metastock. So this was something that uh, you know people really liked, really enjoyed working with. A lot of people like candlestick patterns, so we decided to again add this into Metastock and made it make it part of the Metastock program. So let's go through uh, what the Haguro method does and how it can help you provide uh, buys and sells. Now, one key thing about the Haguro method is it's based on weekly charts, and that's how it was designed. Uh, when you look at original candlestick patterns and where they come from, uh, you'll hear people like Greg and Morris um, and others talk about how uh, candlestick patterns are really designed around daily and weekly because uh, it was trading from one day to the next. And, you know, it didn't really involve a lot of one minute or five minutes. So a lot of the original works were designed around daily and weekly charts. So that's how this, the uh, Haguro method was designed was around those weekly charts. So what it does is, A, provides support and resistance on a weekly basis, and then it uses key turning candle pattern signals. So in the, throughout the uh, expert commentary and things, they're referred to as lines, but they're actually uh, candle patterns is what he's talking about. And then it's a, fa it's a fairly accurate forecast of weekly movement is what we're looking at. Uh, so what he does to determine what's called his support and resistance line, first of all, he takes a candle, as you can see in the measurements here, and he looks at the high minus the low, and that gives him a midpoint. So let's actually go in and let's let's look at a uh, chart here. So we're just going to right click on this chart and we'll do the Haguro method. So when it first comes up, you can see it comes up as a weekly. So you'll see this line here. So this is the midpoint line. So what it does, it takes the high minus the low of a candle and gives us a midpoint. Now you can see that it doesn't update at every bar as you would think as you're giving support and resistance. If you're plotting at every bar, it wouldn't really give you an idea of support and resistance. So what it does is it looks for a consolidation before updating. And the way it does that is it uses data from the two previous bars. So let's take, for example, right here, we ha we're still having big movement. So we haven't established a new resistance or support area yet. So we don't have any new support or resistance to use. 
Now, as those start to consolidate and we have a range in movement, you can see this range in movement indicator up here goes from 7 to minus 7. So when that starts to consolidate, it will reset its support or resistance line to give you new sets of support or resistance. So here as we drop down, you can see support drops down to here and then it resets its resistance up to here. And you can see another example of that here. So support comes in here and then resets support up to here as we start to move in. So we have a higher level of support. Let's actually maybe bring up the Dow here uh, to look at it. The Dow actually gives a really good picture uh, of this as an example. So let's uh, let's go in and let's bring up the .dji, and we'll bring up the Higuro method. So we're just going to switch this to a weekly, and let's go down to Higuro. Okay, so here we are again. Now what I'm going to do is bring on the expert advisor. So we'll go in and we'll, we'll find the Higuro expert. Click OK, and now you can see our support and resistance, and then we have these numbered candles. And I'll get into these numbered candles in just a moment and what they mean. Okay, so you can see again this support and resistance resetting us and giving us fairly good support and resistance levels as it moves through and resets. Now, here the last few weeks we've had consolidation in the market, so we don't have clear defined support and resistance. That's where the candle patterns come in to help us understand the direction of those. So let's go back to the PowerPoint for just a minute. So, so we set a new midpoint if the range high minus low is greater than this week than the previous week and the week before. So that's how the mid, that midpoint line resets as we've talked about. So it acts as support and resistance. So what it does is it goes through. So uh, Barton was just asking me, he, didn't, he doesn't see any numbers on his. So, to do that, when you apply the template, the expert isn't actually attached to it. So what you need to do is just attach the expert. So we're going to just right click, go expert advisor, attach, scroll down, look for the Higuro method, and then click OK, and that will give you the numbers on your chart. So each line here, or candle pattern, is given a number. So these are 1 through 8, so the green ones are all bullish. The red ones are all bearish. So we have 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. Now you can see 9 through 16 here aren't in any particular order because they are inverse of these patterns over here. So they're, they're given a different set of numbers over here. You don't have to remember that. The expert advisor will take care of that for you and show you that. Now each of these candle patterns has a significance to them. So let's go in and let's look at the commentary window. So particular ones to look out for is actually the number three. The number three is one of the most important candle patterns because it's very it's a big indication of a reversal. So let's actually go back and let's look at these particular ones here and look at uh, say this one right here. So you see this number three? So the range of this stock is not extended more than 7%. It means the candle lines are less significant. So it'll give you a ranking and telling you if it's a significant candle or not. So it's a strong warning of reversal when found in a high price area. Are we in a high price area right here? Absolutely. We've had this big run on the market and it's, and it's starting to top and we get this number three pattern. So it's, it's starting to reverse. And now then what happens afterwards? Uh, Conversely, what happens here with this number three? It's in a bottom area. It's a big reversal. Okay, so when line three is found at a high price, long positions should be closed within a week. If the opening price of the following week is above the midpoint, selling is still indicated and short positions should be held. So it'll walk you through and show you how, how to interpret these candle patterns and what's happening on them. So if we scroll down, you can see here's all the number, number, different numbered patterns. So here's the, the number three. This is what you'd be indicating with the number three. And you can go through and you can click on any of these bars and it will give you, excuse me, an overview of what's happening there and give you strength indications on what's happening. So the range of this stock has extended more than 7%, meaning the candle lines are more significant. So at this particular time, it was more significant because it's extended more than 7%. So it's going to walk you through that and give you this direction. So you've got two things going for you here. One, you've got that midpoint support and resistance line, and then you've got the numbered candle patterns that will actually indicate what's happening and how you should be looking at that individual candle pattern 
on this chart. So it's a very powerful system here. So again, this is designed for weekly, so it's a little bit longer term of a strategy, but you can use it to really help you look at the direction of what's going on based off of powerful candle patterns. So it's actually a, pr a pretty strong system in that respect. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the Haguro method there. And we've just got a few more things here, and then we'll wrap up and uh, go to any Q&A that you may have as well. So just a few more moments. Um, again, here's the significant events. There is a scan that you can do in the, uh, with the Haguro method for that candle three pattern. So if you're looking for reversals, let's go up to explore here. And let's look for Haguro method in our explorations. Okay, so here's the candle three or more than 7% range or just a midpoint cross. So if you want to see if it's moving above or below that midpoint. So let's just scan for a candle pattern three. We'll look at the NASDAQ 100. We want to scan on weekly because that's what it's based on. So let's go ahead and start our exploration. Again, we're using our local data here um, and it's, it will compress down to the weekly for us so we can identify that. And while it starts up there, I'm just going to take another quick drink of water, excuse me. Okay, we're not getting any signals yet, so we don't have any indications of reversal. Okay, so in that, in that particular instance, we didn't get any. You can see they were all filtered out normally, so we didn't have any there. If we did, it would tell us which stocks are meeting that criteria and which of them are in that, uh, that state. Okay, so the last set of systems we're going to go through is the, uh, the Teach Talk trade methods. So the Teach Talk trade methods are uh, systems that were developed by a gentleman, gentleman named Mike Roshilo. He also goes by Uncle Mike. Um, see if I have a picture here. Nope, I don't. Um, but what he does is he actually takes a twist on classic indicators, so like the Bollinger Band oscillator, the MACD, and then his proprietary oscillator that he created, and gives buy and sells based off of this new interpretation of them. Now, the one thing that's actually really cool about this is you get to go in and set your own account size and risk settings. So let's go in and show you how to do that here first before we get into a system. So what you do is you come up to this little indicator icon up here, this indicator builder. Click that and let me bring this back onto the chart here. So we'll go down and look for TTT account settings. And what you can do is click edit here. And what, what's cool about this, there's not any other systems out there. There's one add on that, that does this, but this is built into Metastock for his system, is you can go in and you can set your risk, how much of capital you have in your account, and how much you're willing to risk on a trade as well in your stock. So you can come in here and you can say, well, I have 10,000 in my account, I have 100,000 in my account, I have 5 million, whatever it may be, whatever you have in your account, you can come in here and set this. Next, what you can do is you can set your risk level. So if you're willing to risk 2% or 1% of your account capital. So if I have 100,000, I'm willing to risk 2,000 in a particular trade or 10%, whatever your risk is, let's just say three for the moment. And then you can set your stop. So right now it's set as a default 10%, we'll just leave that alone. So what happens now is once I've set all that, the expert commentary will actually update to your account size and risk to help you know when to get in and out and how much you should be risking in that trade. So let's actually do a scan here. We're going to go in and look at the Teach Talk trade method here. Let's do the Bollinger Band oscillator. And we'll just do our NASDAQ 100 list again. Let's go ahead and start our exploration. Okay, so uh, we're going through, hopefully we'll get some buy signals here that uh, we can show you some examples. Okay, it looks like we have some examples here we can show you, that's good. And let's look at our report. Okay, so it looks like we have one stock that's giving a buy today based off of this. Oh, was I still using a weekly setting? Oh, I appreciate that. Hey, everybody, everybody's on the ball. Let me, let's actually change it here go to a daily. I could look at a weekly uh, if we wanted to, but let's actually go with the daily just to, just to do that. Um, we'll see what how our results change there. Thank you everybody for having eagle eyes. Okay, let's look at our reports. Okay, we have a few more scenarios here. So let's, uh, let's just open up these four charts. We'll just hold down our shift and we'll do open chart. 
Okay, and I opened it up with the Hagoro template. So let's uh, let's actually just apply the Teach Talk Trade template on here. And we're, we looked at the Bollinger Band. Okay, so let's go in now and let's look at the expert commentary. So now you can see the Bollinger Band is displayed differently up here. It's displayed on a scale from 0 to 100. Basically what you're looking for here is you're looking for the scaling when it comes below 0 it triggers an entry. When it goes above zero, it triggers an exit. Okay, so that's what that's how it's displayed. That's how it's calculating its expert advisor. But when we go into the details here, it will walk you through your trade. So based on your account size of one hundred thousand, your risk per trade is three thousand dollars. So that's how much we can risk in this trade. Uh, when we when will we get into the trade? At the open of the next bar. Obviously, that's a, that's when we get in. It's the open of tomorrow. How many, what should my lot size be? 623. And when should I exit? Well, when it goes back up and it crosses above 100. Okay, so it's going to walk me through that. Where should I set my stop? You should set it at 106.67. So as it moves up, we'll set our stop down here. That's our risk percentage that we put in as our risk and what we're willing to put into that trade. So as it comes down, That'd be our stop, but obviously we want it to go up, and we've got a target level up here of when this hits 100, it should be time to get out of the trade. So he's done a great job of helping you understand when you should be getting into the trade, how big your lot size should be, what your risk should be, and what your stop should be. So it's a great money management system on top of everything, and that's one unique thing about it is, uh, is that way of setting what it is to your account settings and how you want to trade it. So then I'll give you some measurements here. The last sell signal was 12 bars ago. The last buy occurred today. So you can see had this movement down. Up. So it's done a fairly good job of identifying those trading opportunities. Now there's one for the MACD. So you can go through and scan the MACD. It'll give you that same commentary based off of the, uh, the MACD or his T3 oscillator. So you can go through and do any of those in there. So let's just uh, let's just apply the MACD template just to show you how the MACD looks. We won't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, T, 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 MACD. Okay, so it looks similar down here. This one's a little tighter. You can see the indicator um, looks similar for, for the MACD. It's more of this tight oscillator. And this one we're looking for a scaling of 1 to negative 1 for our entries and exits. So that's how this one's determining it. Now obviously we didn't have our buy signal on this one. So this isn't the one that we're looking at. We, we had the, the uh, Bollinger Band oscillator for the buy on this one. There are system tests included with the, with the T3 systems, so you can uh, use that. Now, uh, one thing uh, is there's, there's three systems that are included in Metastock. There's the MACD system, the Bollinger Band system, and the T3. But he's also put together what's called his uh, Teach Talk Trade Trend Momentum Toolkit. So he actually has eight additional systems and strategies you can buy and use as part of the upgrade as well. So if you get the upgrade, you can get $100 off his add-on. Um, so make sure to take advantage of that. That Try it out. It has the same 30-day money-back guarantee as any of our other add-ons. Plus you get the $100 off with your upgrade. So that we've, uh, we've covered all those rules there. And uh, finally, the last thing that we've got, um, included in as part of the upgrade is people ask us uh, quite frequently for um, easier ways to plot multiple indicators. So you can always build your own templates, but we've put together some new templates for you. Uh, one of the big ones is uh, pivots. And people really like pivot analysis and understanding direction of the market. So there's new two, pivot, two new pivot indicators. Uh, there's the pivot daily, uh, which is only an RT only because when you're looking at a daily pivot, you want to use that on intraday timeframes rather than uh, daily uh, and weekly timeframes. The pivot weekly, you can use on daily charts. So let's just uh, pull that up as an example. So if we apply templates, we'll go down to pivots weekly. So you can see the, the weekly pivot direction on the daily price. So if we were to put on the, the pivot daily, Let's, uh, let's go down and see. You can't use it on, a, on an intraday time frame because it's, it's too noisy. We'd want to use that only on intraday charts. Okay, so that's, uh, those are a few of the new uh, templates. There's also some in there for the price percentage oscillator, um, 
uh, popularized MACD, the MACD histogram. So as some of these indicators, it just makes it easier to, to view them. So if we go and do the MACD histogram, you can see we have the MACD histogram up here with uh, the MACD um, on the chart as well. So these are popular views that people ask us for quite frequently. So we've included those in there as well. Um, other ones, uh, a Bollinger Band, oscillating indicators, the PPO um, in there as well. So those are all uh, included now in Metastock 15 as well and available in both end of day and real time. So uh, everything that I've taken you through is included in both uh, end of day and real time. Again, just to go back to the very beginning here, Uh, just to recap, so here's everything we talked about again today. Uh, we had the offline mode, the downloader and local data, which again is a big for a lot of our users who are wanting to upgrade to the latest version but have been using maybe their own data or have old data files on their computer they want to be able to access and use and not be on the internet. Those are now all available for you to use. Um, the custom time frames in the Explorer and System tether, Tester, being able to forecast in any time frame. The Power Strike for options analysis. Uh, sector stat experts for market trend and direction, the Haguro method, the Teach Talk trade systems, and the seven new templates. So that's the, the overview of everything new in Metastock 15. This has been really a user-driven um, upgrade. We've had a lot of demand for that offline downloader, local data, the new timeframes, everything there. So we're really excited about this upgrade. Um, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to to come and spend an hour with me to learn about Metastock 15. If you haven't upgraded to 15 yet, um, you can definitely contact our sales. Um, you can call them at the 801-506-0900 or go to metastock.com slash sales chat and they're happy to help you with an upgrade or a new purchase if you don't have Metastock. We've got some great promos and specials going on right now to try out all these new features in Metastock 15. So with that being said, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have uh, about Metastock 15 and how to use Metastock 15. Uh, I'm getting a comment here from Rick. Uh, great changes. I'm glad to see the downloader back with the improvements. Thanks, Rick. We're, we're glad to have it back and uh, have uh, those features back for our users. I know it's been a, a long time coming and to get that back, but we're excited to have it back as well. So any other questions or comments that anybody has that I can answer uh, before um, we wrap up for the day? Uh, well, I've been uh, doing both offline and online today. I have a question from Scott. So it was both offline and online uh, that I've been working with today, showing you local data and online data so you can switch between both. Okay, great. Well, it looks like that's all the questions that we have for today. Uh, we do have a, a, a new a set of series of uh, webinars coming up on Metastock 15 and how to use Metastock 15. Uh, let me actually just show you really quick on the web page uh, what we have coming up. So if you're on metastock.com, you can actually click on events on the side here and go to webinars. And we have a more introduction to Metastock 15 webinars coming up done by different people. So you may be able to get different perspectives of uh, what's coming up. If you'd like to learn more about the uh, Teach Talk trade system, um, that's uh, the additional add-on that's available. You can go and watch uh, his webinar tomorrow uh, that will be presented. And then uh, general overviews of Metastock and what's coming up with Metastock. Uh, if you're in different areas of the country, we also have new seminars uh, coming up, live seminars where it's actually a two-hour seminar. Um, here's all our locations coming up. You're welcome to uh, visit us at any of these upcoming uh, seminars as well. Uh, a couple of questions coming up. Is there a recording up for today's webinar? Yes, we are recording it, and we will be posting it up to our YouTube channel here in the next few days, so just watch for it up there. Uh, then somebody else asking, Andrew, I am with a group that use Metastock and they also use RMO. Is that part of Metastock 15? Now, there's actually two things with the RMO. There's an RMO strategy that's built into Metastock and then there's uh, an add-on for RMO uh, as well. So there is a, an inbuilt RMO that you can use uh, that's included in Metastock 15 and then there's the uh, add-on that's called the a RMO ATM with the power screener that you can get as an as an additional system for Metastock. It's an add-on. 
Okay, any other uh, questions I can answer for anybody? If you do have any other questions for me, uh, my email address is uh, kelly.clement at metastock.com. You're welcome to reach out to me, and I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has at any time. Um, I interact with our customers a lot, uh, so I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to work with you and help you out on any questions you have as well. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to come uh, to the webinar today. Again, uh, give our sales guys a call at 801-506-0900 uh, to, uh, to get the latest version of MetaStock and try it out. Uh, you do get a 30-day money-back guarantee on it to try it out. <laughs> and you can see some people there in the background having some fun with this as well. So thanks again, everybody. And um, Stephen, uh, we look forward to talking to you. You're welcome to email me directly and uh, talk about it as well. And you're getting introduced to the Menstock staff in the background as they come around and uh, say hello. So <laughs> thanks again, everybody.